Danny and Dave Daly right here on the Muskegon Channel. I'm Andy O'Reilly. There's Dave Cackley. I was contemplating last night, and it builds. When you, when you got to contemplate mm-hmm. something, it's, at, it's after comments are made and thoughts are given. Um, you've been here, and mm-hmm. you've seen the massive amount of floor space that goes from the door out to the living room. Mm-hmm. That's that, that's the um, uh, hardwood flooring kind of. Well, it's laminate flooring, I think. I, I, I can't really call it hardwood, but is it laminate? Is it fake I hardwood? I we couldn't afford hardwood. I mean, that's you know that's rich people stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But we've got the. It's not um, linoleum. It's not um, hardwood. It's that stuff that snaps together. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it's called. Flooring, some type of flooring. Some type of flooring okay. that. You can't really vacuum, and at some point you have to mop. Right. Well, okay. It was insinuated over the weekend that someone else who resides here at the uh, at the compound um, was thinking about mopping. Now, okay, the story of mopping goes like this: we 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 hadn't mopped yet at all, and then I got a mop, and wait I, at all this. Since we moved in. Fall? Since you moved in? No, really? there's no need to. We don't spill a lot. It's not like there's juice all over the okay. floor and people dumping spaghetti off but high chairs know, it, and all it, that it, kind of crap. It gets a little dingy over time. And you've been there, what, a couple of years now? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm getting to so, it. I'm getting there. This, I'm build, let me build the story. So, me being the trophy husband I am, I took it upon mm-hmm. myself. Yeah, maybe three, four months ago, I, I pulled everything off the floor and I mopped. Giant pain in the ass. Uh, we didn't have a bucket that fit the mop, so I actually had to use, um, I think I used a trash can, which was wide enough to put some water in to make the mopping go, because our buckets didn't fit the mop. So then, okay. the last time I was in Menards, I bought a bucket that was wide enough, to, so I thought, and I got screwed there, so now we got this little short Menards bucket that is pointless um but you know thanks for screwing me out of a dollar fifty there um so i went back to menards and i found a bucket that's like really wide mm-hmm. but shallow but it's good enough to mop right so the mop fits in that well to make a long story short she well, wait I, wait I, wait what you're gonna make this story short well yeah i'm gonna I'll get you, there you passed that like three minutes ago oh get out of here with that now this is a good story <laughs> so over the weekend last weekend i i hear from another resident of the abode that um, she was thinking about mopping. Now, that never came to be. Okay. Which means there was no intent of somebody else mopping. Somebody was placing the seeds of mopping in my head. That's smart. I, you know. That's smart. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, now she's just dropped the idea that I'm Mm -hmm. to mop here sometime in the near future however that is a vast area that requires a lot of physical exertion of when course. it comes to mopping that's good no that's good no that is not good it's very good it's it's you uh, need that in your life you it's need cumbersome. that in your life it's task driven it's that's good no no no, no. these are all pot you're saying things that are all positive things so last night i get to thinking why the hell hasn't ryobi invented a 40 volt riding mop think how nice that would be to just be able to jump on a small maybe like a bar stool scooter something like that that you you know you could just rig up and drive around the kitchen you, and then all your mopping stuff you, i think you that would really be awesome don't want any exertion in your life whatsoever none whatsoever you realize I, that's really, really bad for you. Just well, throwing that out. It, it might it be. But then again, bad. sore, sore backs and sore arms. Those are really uh-huh. bad. I sorry, you 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 don't lift anything, you don't push anything. You you do this and you do it very well. I you push are you. productive. I'm not saying you're not productive because you absolutely are. I push you. you. You need to exert yourself a little bit. I push kind. you to be a better human. I mean, uh-huh, that's pushing. Uh-huh. Right. Um, um but yeah, so I will, here we are with a mop and 
uh, a floor and it's been swept, it's been vacuumed, it's 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 really not dirty. Okay, but, well, good for you for doing that. Well, I haven't done That's it yet. Good. I but oh, so this is this is still in the planning stages. Yeah, I I I just can't bring myself to the idea of mopping that entire thing. It's it's, it's a lot. It's. See, this is what I have. this is my issue with people who don't do any physical labor at all. Okay, I'm listening. Um, it's a lot for you because you never, ever, ever do anything physical. Okay. Back in your younger days, when you were a bouncer and you were throwing people into windows and bouncing their heads off doors as you tossed them out of you know this, that, or the other bar. I mean, that was, you were doing physical stuff. You right. were, you know, back, back in your radio day, you, you, you were sitting, when you were setting up remotes, Ugh. you know, you, and it, yeah, that, that was physical, physical stuff. Um, you may have even worked out a little bit back I'll in the tell day. You what, I don't know, but, they're... but, um, now any little bit of physical activity for you yeah. is a huge pain. It's, it's like, oh, yeah, it's a pain in the I ass. can't do I it. I hate it. I hate it. But, but I will say this. Your wife, this is a brilliant, this is, this is something, and I don't want to say only women do this, okay. but mostly women, and it's really, really smart women who do this All right, I'm with listening. their husbands or boyfriends, significant other, what have you. She, she got you, she, she put the nugget in your head. She did not want to do it. She was not going to do it. She wasn't going to ask you to do it. Right. She was going to infer to you that it should be done and subtly nudge you in the direction of doing it right without asking you without putting it upon you but now you put it upon yourself which you well, should do but this was this is that 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 subtle female brilliance right there point really taken is. point taken but in my defense over the last week mm -hmm. let's take a look at what i've done to contribute around the house to to earn my keep if you will now um there was a roast that probably got a little overcooked um it was me that finally just said okay let's throw that out so i took it out of the refrigerator and just discarded the roast that was that was big so you took it from the refrigerator you took a roast from the refri refrigerator a burnt to roast. the trash burnt roast a burnt roast yep you 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 threw that away i did and what do you consider that I consider that my you, contribution. You picked up a root. Throwing All right. something then, away. Then, then, sir, um, there was um, helping fold the laundry. I did that twice. Okay. Okay. Twice. Um, so, what else have I done around here that was miraculous and all husbandly? Um, oh, we had a strawberry type coffee cake, of which I ate okay. one piece. Okay. And it really was gross. Okay. So I threw that out. Um, I saved I saved her from empty calories and a disgusting thing from the bakery, which nobody liked. And and possible food poisoning. See? You could have got you, I, you, I stepped you in. stopped. You ste stepped in. There could have been projectile vomiting. And you said, No, I'm not gonna let my lady fair experience that. That's what I said. I'm gonna take this upon me. Showing initiative. I know. I'm I'm rethinking my entire opinion of what you've done over the you really past should. however many because days. I, I mean, what? you try to disparage me as a contributor here. And was I, it? I, I wasn't disparaging. I was, I, was, I was trying to put it in context. Oh, but okay. hey, kudos to you. Well, thank you for going but above we still need, and beyond. We still need that forty volt riding mop because of it's course, because mop, God what, forbid. Let me ask you this: When's the last time you mopped anything, dude? I throw around hundred pound slabs. I that, sweep sawdust. That's what about ism? I, I cut. I, I take, asked I when take you mop something. Power tools, and I cut holes in particle board and laminate, and I I do this for eh, roughly eight to ten hours, three days a week. Right. On top that, of that, that was not you know, the question. However. Other stuff. The question. No, that was, was not the question. When but, was the last time you mopped something? I can't tell you the last time I mopped anything. See, okay, so you don't know the. But pain. again, we're we're talking physical exertion. No, we're not. We're, we're talking we're talking house tasks. One specific duty. 
I just wanted to know the last I time didn't. you mopped anything there. So apparently, I'm ahead of you in the game of mopping. So I was, yeah. Oh, you know what? I will grant you that. All right. Score one for Andy. Yeah, when it well, comes to mopping. Yeah. I am. I I will bow to your mop mopping prowess. I am. I I will sit here in awe. You should of your domesticated skill set when it comes yep. to the area of mopping in mop related activity um to that i absolutely am in your shadow thank you that is 100 percent accurate That's all i was looking for oh there you go i'm affirming you now well thank you are you mopping. happy with that i i, I think today if you if you really want to show me up go home and mop yeah it's not gonna happen but um again i will uh i will just i will bask in the glow of uh your your domesticated i would like you i would like you to that, bask in that area i would like you to bask in the mop and glow mop <laughs> look at you see what wow. i did wow that was really clever that's what i do not just not just great when it comes to the skill of mopping quite the wordsmith impressive what have you come right. up with for news all right, let's get into it. Girls are graduating at higher rates than boys across the U.S., at least when it comes to high school. Of course, there's more of them in college now, too. But uh, according to the latest study, which for some reason is limited to 2018, 45,000 fewer boys than girls graduated high school in that uh, one year. Apparently, uh, disciplinary issues increases in mental health problems uh, among boys are seen as uh, as driving factors here's the bottom line uh, those are obviously issues obviously um it's nothing to graduate high school it's a zero burger it takes no effort you barely have to show up anymore it is not a, somebody has, they're pushing kids through school they, if you can't graduate at this point I got no, I got no sympathy. I got, no, I have a really hard time with this as it's done now, because when you and I were kids, you had to not just show up. You had to do the work. You don't even have to do the work anymore. Yeah. Hell, in most cases, AI is doing it for you. You got chat GPT, it's doing all your homework. You don't have to think. In some cases, a lot of cases, you're told what to think. So, I mean, you don't even have to use your brain anymore. And again, you don't even have to show up except on those count days where, okay, you show up, please show up this day, screw the rest of the school year. We're going to, you know, it, again, you can't graduate now. It, this is, this is, this is a parental issue. Well, <laughs> it really is. I think we go it's, back to yesterday's zero. conversation when it we talked zero. about early learning and how you turn that need to learn on in preschool. Yeah. I, I don't think it's necessary. Well, I don't think preschool is, is necessary. Well, you know, it, again, I, and maybe I am too wrapped up in how things were done you efficiently. In, no, hear me out. I'm too wrapped up in how things were done efficiently and with more discipline and with more respect and with more pride in just the effort. That doesn't exist anymore. Okay. That's where. That doesn't exist anymore. That's the problem. That's where. That is right where the problem is. Right. But, but hear me out. It doesn't start in preschool. It doesn't hear me start out. It's, it's, if that's the problem, you need to retool the process. And that's where it starts in preschool. No. And that's no joke. You need. That's you need how to it do, works. You, no, You need no, to grab no. these kids early no. on and teach them a new process of learning Instead of sitting there, A, B, C, one, two, three, duh, blah, blah, No, blah. we're not doing that. that. That's part of the problem. We're not doing the A, B, C, one, two, three. They can't count. They can't spell. They can't read. They can't do math. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That's where we are. It's I'm a failing you. system. You have it's to retool the system. system. The re retool, no, we, we, we have to get back to what we were doing before. We have Don't no work. expectations. We're not putting expectations on kids. We're not doing that. There is a level we have we have put the bar so low you can you don't have to you you barely even need to step over it and they still can't a lot of them still can't do it. 
It's insane. You need I'm to retool this the as a system. Parent. No, no, we need to we need to run it more efficiently. I don't Look think the system's necessarily me. broken. Yesterday, you talked because we listened. Cindy and I listened together yesterday as we mm -hmm. ran in to get some pizza. You talked in circles for a good ten minutes about this subject, and the simple truth is this: what we have now, education system wise, is not really working anymore. So in order to fix that, we have to look at new ways of doing things, which begins in preschool with changing the way that the entire education system works. And we have to do that by engaging kids in a different way than what worked when we were kids. That's, and, that's and to do that, fair. we have to take a look at the idea of how do we spark their young minds at an early age and engage them in a way of learning that is not traditional to what we knew. Uh, I saw, and it has I, to start what? with the idea of paying those teachers a livable wage to move things along. And dismissing preschool like you did yesterday was the stupidest thing you've ever said. No, it's not. Okay. I, I will, I'm going to grant you some points there. I will grant a, a different way of doing it. Maybe. Okay. Like I've seen these outdoor schools. I, I've had, I had a niece of mine that went through multiples who've gone through that. And that can be very, very productive for kids. I'm, I'm all aboard on that. Do I think it's necessarily necessary in preschool? No, I think you can do that in kindergarten. You can start. We're, we're just, we're, we're, we're really griping over a year of before, because again, no, none of my brothers or sisters went to preschool. They were, we're all borderline honor students. I mean, honor students. Yeah. Okay. So it's not about, it's not about doing it in preschool. That so, worked for them in the seven kindergarten. Kindergarten, well, here's the thing is that they're still excelling now well, more so I'm telling than, you, but than the younger generation kids is. Of the 70s and they're in their and 50s kids and 60s. Today. And parents today. They're in their 50s today. and 60s. Yes, parents today suck. Well, a lot of them do. And we got into that too yesterday, and remember? I, and, and, yeah. Parents yeah, today suck. Is, Why do they suck? Because they're never home. Because they don't make enough money for one parent to stay that. home it's, and take again, care of the kids the way that we'd like to see that. You got to adjust to that. That's the ideal American picture, right? Dad's at work. He's mm -hmm. got a decent job. He can afford to pay for two cars, a house, kids, wife, and all that kind of stuff. Well, yeah. guess what? And there's Nobody can afford that anymore. There's truth So to that. we send two parents to work. Some of them have to work the day shift and the night shift, and then they're trying to raise their kids. And then we look at the parents and we say, oh, these parents are terrible. They're awful. Well, wait a minute. No, they're not. They're trying to keep a roof over their kid's house, and they're trying to make um, things work when they really can't because they can't afford it. And then yesterday, you jumped in and said, well, we shouldn't pay these people more because they're just there. Well, you if you want that. the system fixed, you need to pay people what they're worth. And if you want that idealistic idea of the kids staying home and getting that nurturing education from their mom, you're going to have to figure out a way to pay people what they're worth and not go I'm to sorry. the bottom line of nothing but corporate greed where you got people right under your thumb, under control, living by fear because tomorrow they could be fired and if they try to excel in any way shape or form and i'm not asking the companies to go belly up by overpaying people for doing nothing you think i don't drive by a construction site and see five guys staring down a hole there and get a little go. pissed off i do yes that's a little bit much right but for the mm -hmm. guy that's working at say being a sixth grade teacher or doing a job in a, a factory or something like that to have to have a second job and his wife has to work Most third shift to try and take care of kids that's where we are failing and that is where people that stand there and go we ain't paying people more that's where the erosion of society is starting to happen and is crumbling and then you sit here today blaming parents and kids for turning out yes. kids that are shit I'm idiots because mm -hmm. i'm blaming them because they're it's divided on us as and they can't stand there they cannot they cannot. They can't. I'm sorry. The can't. I'm. I'm sick of the can't. Okay. I'm sick of the. I can't do this. Yes, you can. You can do it. You know what's going to take? It's going to take a little bit more effort. How about this? Here's a, here's a thought. Year-round school. I'm fine with that. Or again, I had a. I had a. a but the teachers aren't. Teachers aren't. Bullshit. Half half the reason I went into this is to get my three months off. And again, I'm not crapping on teachers. Some of them. Do great work. I've got teachers in my family. You married a teacher, okay? Yep. It's a noble profession. 
but we don't got a lot of great ones. Let's be honest about that. They're not all they're not all heroes. No, I'm sorry, but they're not. In fact, the vast majority of them are like the vast majority in any industry in anywhere in America, mediocre to below average. That's just how most where most of us fit. Okay, because most of us, quite honestly, and I can I've considered myself in this for the better part of my life. I'm trying to improve on that yeah. underachievement. We're we're a nation of underachievers. Yep, we're we're living off past history. And nobody wants to put out more effort. And again, I threw in the homeschool idea. Hey, you know what? Throw throw the mom extra cash. Give give tax breaks to homeschooling parents. That would be a great idea. It would be you great. Shit on that. That well, there you go. So there are ways to do this. And again, when I I'm not saying people shouldn't make more money. I'm saying I'm not just going to throw more money at you. You got to give me more if you want more. Okay. This is just where we're at in society it would be nice i would love to make more money i would love I, this is just not where we are that's why i have to work three jobs okay so i've had I can two work or three, three jobs, jobs at any given point since i was 18. there you go that's where we're at and it's a honestly there is value in that there's meaning in that but there's, you can't it, see it's good for you where the bottom falls out when you're trying to raise kids see. and you can't be there because see. you have to make rent. I can see. I can see that. Okay. I do see that. I'm. What, my point isn't that it's not hard to do. It is extremely hard. Okay. Being a parent is really hard. You know, working multiple jobs is really hard. I know it. I'm doing it. Saying okay. you can't do it is bullshit. Because okay. you can. It's how much do you want? And then again, we can talk. We can talk more money. We can talk all this. Everybody else has to up their game. We all okay. got to do it. And no, here in, in the bottom line is that the sad truth is nobody wants to do it. Okay. Because we're all lazy. Go watch. We just are. No small matter tonight. Yeah. Uh, look, again. No, nope, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not going to do that. I agree. I don't want to hear no, somebody else's legitimate perspective. No, nope, no. I'm going to stand not, right here and do that. Hey, no, I, I am all for, hey, I'm all it. for other views. Uh, okay, go I, watch. I, I don't. I don't deny it's it's probably Write it a down. Good documentary no small that I'll matter. get to at some point. No, watch it tonight. Uh, okay, it's not it's not a pressing issue for me. Of course not. It just isn't. Of course not. It just isn't. But I'll get to it. Okay. There you go. Anyway, what else is going on? According to the FDA, some eye drops could cause blindness. Consumers are being warned against using more than two dozen Ooh. eye drop products of uh, being sold at Right Aid, CVS, and Target. Uh, impacted products are marketed under CVS Health, Cardinal Health, Rugby, Rite Aid, Target, Up and Up, and Velocity Pharma. The full list of uh, impacted products is available on the FDA's that's website. That's all I would buy. That's a, that's a lot. If I saw something on a shelf that said Velocity Pharma, I'm buying it. <laughs> Think how fast that's I can mop if I got that. That's great. <laughs> exactly. That's great. That's great branding there. That's like eating all the Flintstones vitamins at once. Uh -huh. Finally, it was a Motor City beat down on Monday Night Football. The Lions roll over the Raiders 26 to 14. It wasn't that close. Detroit out gains Vegas. Yeah, it was. That was a score. 300 yards. Uh, they improved to 6 and 2, a two game lead in the NFC North. Good enough for the second best record in the National Football League. They're a coming. Oh, yeah. They're a coming. And they're, this is, I don't know if it's the Super Bowl this year or not, but this team is set up for success for years to come young talent aggressive hard working hard working that is a that that's that's a team if you're in detroit detroit doesn't have a lot to take pride in right now why not you can take pride in that football team i, I can take pride in all kinds of things in detroit and i'm just saying detroit's successful you just crapped all anyway. Detroit. see that's how you are yeah why well, do you do I, I was balancing out i said you got something to take pride in there I you love go detroit. That's a positive, and you got to turn it into a, something else. Anyway, I didn't Texas beats anything. Arizona, three to one. Game three of the World Series. Texas leads that series two games to one. That's sports. All right, time for Jeopardy, and everybody's excited about the category today because it's Halloween traditions once again. Yes. It said that these two. Oh, it's six hundred dollars, by the way. Okay. It said that these two colors trace back to the festival of Sam Hain. One representing death and the other autumn harvest. Okay, so what's, you kind of stumbled. Could you repeat that, please? 
if you would just put a little effort into listening, if no, you would was, just you, put you your best foot through forward, that, you, you need to put I a am. more concentrated effort into paying attention. This is a two-way street. This no, is a no, two-way no, no. street. Here, if, you, if you go back to what you were saying earlier, mm, this takes yes. focus. This takes yes. drive. This takes I paying was. attention. You Think stumble. It. it was, yes. You're being was, lazy and apathetic like you just not, told everybody else. Not at all. All right. Right, one more I, I pointed myself out as an underachiever, didn't I? It said these two colors trace back to the Festival of Sam Hain. Colors, okay. One representing death and the other oh. representing autumn harvest. Thank you. Black and orange. Okay. See? There, there you have go. it. You got yourself a win. Even though you needed a crutch. <laughs> Three. Eight, three. All right. Have yourself a great Halloween, Dave Cackley. You and too. we'll see you back here tomorrow. See ya. Happy Halloween, Muskegon. It looks like it's going to be a snowy one, so let's take a look at those details brought to you by Trinity Health. Starting out with your weather headlines, we will see snow today on Halloween, and some of that will probably accumulate, especially on the grassy surfaces and anything that is colder than, let's say, a road or something like that. But thankfully, we do have a slight warming trend going into the weekend, where highs will return to right around 50 degrees by Friday. But they definitely won't be close to 50 degrees today, though probably only stay in the upper 30s if that, and especially if we get some heavy snow falling, they may only hold in the mid 30s. So here's how the snow will likely play out throughout the day. This is at 10 a.m. and we could have a little bit of lake effect component early in the morning before the system starts to change the winds more to the southeast. And as that does happen, the system will move right over Lake Michigan. And with that, some convergence could actually land right over Muskegon County. And if that does happen, which most of the models are actually showing that Muskegon could pick up on some pretty heavy snowfall rates. So we'll likely see snow accumulation on the grass if this does pan out right around 3 p.m. or so. But then by 7 p.m., that low continues to push off to the south. And as drier air filters in when, and we lose that lift in the atmosphere, the snow will gradually end during trick-or-treating time. So during trick-or-treating time, it will probably be white on the ground, at least on the grass. The roads may be slushy, if not just wet. So just be aware and be safe as you go trick-or-treating on Halloween. And speaking of snowfall, this is how much this model is showing. Muskegon seen upwards of three inches, but I wouldn't be shocked if some of that melts. So I don't think we'll get that much snow, but if what the models are showing where that convergence ends up over Muskegon County, if that does happen, we could actually see a decent amount of snow for the first snow of the entire season. And unfortunately, will land on a holiday where you'll have to be outside. So for your Halloween, expect snow showers, the first accumulating snow of the winter season, and it's not even winter, honestly. And then overnight, the snow will gradually end around 8 p.m. or so, becoming lake effect snow over Lake Michigan, so we'll probably clear out a little bit, bringing a pretty cold night with only a low of 27. And then by Wednesday morning, we'll Probably have a few lingering flurries as the winds shift a little bit more to the northwest, but we'll warm up during the afternoon to 43. So any snow that did accumulate on the ground on Halloween will be gone by Wednesday. We'll warm up to around 50 on Friday with maybe a little bit of rain Friday night, with a better chance of rain returning early next week, especially on Monday. And that's your snowy Halloween forecast brought to you by Trinity Health on the Muskegon channel. And I'm Cold Woods Weather, and enjoy your Halloween and stay warm out there.